Hi, I'm Barbara Gaines. This is Mary Barkley, and of course, this is Dave Letterman. Hi, thank you very much, uh, Barbara. Mary, nice to see you. Hi. You know, I was talking to, uh, thank you for having me on the show, and I'll be brief because I know you have other guests, but I was talking to a staffer uh, before I came out here, and they said, and I had no idea, that I have been on your show more than any other guest. <laughs> I think that's Th true. That's great, thank you very much. And I just got back from California, I was there two weekends in a row, and uh, uh, the weekend before, I was out there for the big uh, uh, comedy festival, uh, Netflix comedy festival, and uh, <clears throat> what uh, a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, comedy, and so forth. And sure. uh, but this thing about uh, the comedians, uh, I'm not funny enough to be attacked on stage, is what I learned. <laughs> You have to be really good <clears throat> to, to get somebody to come up on stage because I <clears throat> tried it and it didn't work and I would discourage it. I don't think it's the way to go. And um, do we have time for this? We have time for everything. Uh, this weekend I was at a, a wedding, at a friend's wedding, and uh, they asked me to sing, which I have done periodically for that weddings. Didn't happen. Yes, it did. And uh, Lady in Red is still. <laughs> Give us a little now. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> anyway, but here I am uh, back from California. <clears throat> now, here's a story. Do you have time for a story? I do. Uh, when I was a child, when I was 16, against all advice to the contrary, uh, I looked at a solar eclipse. And because when you're 16 and there's a solar eclipse, it doesn't make any difference what anybody tells you, <laughs> you're going to take a look. Sure. Uh, and I thought, oh, I'll just look for a second or two. And anyway, I uh, damaged my retinas. I scarred <clears throat> uh, both of my retinas, and to this day I have little jagged lines on any, any straight line I perceive because of the looking at the solar eclipse. Okay, so uh, lesson learned. What's Is that the matter? true? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, okay. So um, now I have a family of my own, and a few years ago there was a, another solar eclipse that everybody was going to be able to see. And the, the special solar eclipse uh, glasses business went through the roof, through the sky. Everybody couldn't get enough protective eyewear. Well, now all I can remember is when I was a child looking at the solar eclipse, and, and then for like six weeks, my eyes were just blinking, and I thought, I'm going blind, I'm going blind. And it was, uh, like I say, a valuable lesson learned. And, I, and, and by the way, uh, P.S. parenthetically, as an aside, I do everything the hard way, and this is an example of that. I think that's definitely true. <clears throat> yes, thank you. And um, so anyway, so now the big solar eclipse, and everybody's in on it. And it's going to happen in the summer, so there's no, right in the middle of the day, and you can go out in your yard, and you can look right at the solar eclipse. So uh, I get scared, and I feel like I have to protect my family. So I get everybody inside, and, and I pull the blinds and close the curtains, and I won't let anybody go outside to look at the solar eclipse, in, in, in spite of the fact that we had the protective glasses. Right. So I made everybody in the, come into the bedroom and watch the solar eclipse on TV. <laughs> like from a bunker. Exactly. Bunker-esque, yeah. Uh, and, and my family resented me for that and for many other things. So... Last night, there was a lunar eclipse, which you can uh, look at all day long. Right. You can sit and stare at it as much as you want. So in order to make it up to my uh, family, I said, let's go up to the roof of the building and we'll look at the lunar eclipse. And, you know, there was a great deal of protest. Well, thanks, but not, <laughs> not a solar eclipse. And I said, yes, I know, but it won't damage your eyes. So the only one who signed up was my son, Harry. So he and I went up to the roof of the building last night for the uh, uh, lunar eclipse. And uh, I said, there you go, son, an eclipse. Enjoy. So it had to be late. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, like 11 o'clock. All right. Yeah, yeah. So now here and now is the picture that my son Harry took of the uh, oh, lunar Harry eclipse. Took yeah, Harry took that it's picture. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a lovely photo. Thank you. Well, I heard that, uh, were you nominated for a daytime Emmy? No, we, we're not eligible for an Emmy. That's too bad. An internet Emmy? Yeah, maybe an Emmy. Didn't we there win a Webby or something? Emmys. Didn't, didn't oh, we oh. once win a Webby and someone stole it? Oh, um, no, no, I think we still have the Webby somewhere. You have a Webby? You, you know, you yeah. use the microphone. I know. <laughs>
First time? First time. Uh, I see why you're not nominated for that daytime Emmy. Sure. Yeah. But did you show them the photo? Yes, of course I did. Do you did. have any stories? Uh, oh, also, you know the term <laughs> uh, red state, blue state? You're welcome. That's what my son Simon said, but Dave invented it. Coined it. Coined it. Part, part of the culture. Thank you. You're welcome, America. <laughs> America thanks you. Yeah, thank you. Well, anything from... Uh, it seems like if I weren't here, this show would be more than dull. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get a chance to see it much. <laughs> Takes two of you for this. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to say goodbye. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Happy to be here. It wasn't until the 2000 election that the political concept or term red state versus blue state took hold. On that election night, the network anchors and pundits relied heavily on the colored maps to explain how close the race was between George W. Bush and Al Gore. Very soon, those red states and blue states that the country saw over and over again on TV became rooted in American culture. David Letterman was one of the earliest cultural figures to pick up on this just a few days after the 2000 election. Candidates have worked out a compromise and thank God not a minute too soon. Here's how it's gonna go. George W. Bush will be president for the red states, <laughs> Al W. Gore will be president for the blue states, and that's, that's the best thing to do. Those same television maps would also help make red state and blue state a popular term among political pundits and newspaper headline writers.